Hello, and welcome to Shep Rambles, where I am Shep and I tend to ramble about what? Anything and everything. And oh my goodness, <laughs> the stock market's not doing very good, is it? Uh, yeah, since uh, this whole trade war thing that's been going on this year, um, and the interest rates being raised by the Fed market has not been taken too kindly to it, um, especially since markets around the world aren't doing too good. There was a moment that the market was uh, going back up and it even hit an all-time high this year because investors were taking their money out of the foreign markets and putting it into the U.S., which is good. Uh, and then the Fed just started raising rates and, and it's done more than just that. It is even more than what happened earlier this year, uh, 2018, uh, where I would consider that a correction. But now uh, there are some that are like, oh, no, we're in correction territory uh, the bull market is still going. No, it's not. <laughs> We're not in a bull market. We're in a bear market. I mean, if it had gone down and bounced back up and maybe retested that, but went up and continued to go up, that, then we would still be in a bull market. But no, it has not done that. It's gone down. It's gone up. It's gone down and retested it, retested that low, gone back up, went back down again, even lower. That is not a bull market. That is not a correction. That, that, that's a bear market. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the bear market is going to last a year or two years or six months, but we're in a bear market. Now, maybe that'll turn around uh, and, and go back up. But, and this is my opinion, okay? I don't think that we can officially call a new bull market until the market starts going back up and starts creating a new high. Because uh, if it goes up and then back down again and then back up and then back down you know unless it's a steady uh increase then i don't consider i'm not going to consider it a bull market until it does go up now who am i am i some big rich investor no you know do i have right to uh, say what's official and what's not. No, and neither does anyone else because they, because you look on the news and you got some saying we're in a bear market and others that are saying no, we're not. What makes them the experts? So instead of listening to the so called experts who don't seem to know what they're talking about, I'm just going to kind of give it to you straight on what I see as, as a person who has done some investing, has definitely lost money. Thank goodness I can write it off on taxes. Um, I'm just a regular Joe, you know, like you. So as a regular Joe, um, just speaking to you, I really don't consider this a bull market in my opinion. Um, I am not trying to sway people like what the so-called experts are doing, where it's like, no, 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 everything's fine. Go ahead and put your money in the market. It's fine. But I will tell you this. Uh, if you're going to invest for the long term, then it might be wise to, uh, start buying some stocks. Uh, not a lot. Sorry about that. Had a little bit of a interruption. 
Uh, basically, what I'm saying is that it's not a bad idea to maybe buy some of the stocks uh, that interest you. You know, maybe you're interested in Walmart or Coca-Cola or McDonald's. Um, you know, uh, if if you want to get maybe you know like a a share or two or or three, uh, that's not that's not a bad idea. And if the market keeps going down, well, just continue to add to your portfolio. That's not a bad thing, because you never know when it's going to turn back around. You don't know where that bottom is going to be at. You know, it might be wise to wait for it to hit that bottom. Talia, please don't move the uh, camera. <sighs> really? My cat is in front, behind the camera, and trying to rub her head on it. Anyway, you don't necessarily know where that bottom is going to be at. So, uh, if you're investing for the long term, don't be afraid of buying a few shares as it's going down. And then once it starts going back up, if you want to continue to add your portfolio, go ahead and, and get a few more shares. Just don't get crazy. Uh, that's my suggestion. Don't get crazy. Don't be buying like 100, 200 shares, you know, unless you got a lot of money and, you know, and you can afford the loss. Uh, I wouldn't do that. And I know some people are saying, well, it's going to go back up. I'm like, yeah, sure, it's going to go back up. But why not, you know, wait to get things at a better price so you can earn more as it's going up? You know, it's kind of like waiting for a sale, right? Why not get something that's on sale rather than waiting until it costs more? That's my whole thing. So... Uh, I want to go over, I want to kind of show you uh, the S&P and what it's looking, lo looking like and why, uh, just to kind of give you my thoughts on why I think we're in a bear market right now. Okay, we are looking at the S&P. Um, more specifically, this is SPY. This is the uh, index SPDR. I go by this. Uh, I know uh, some are saying, no, you should go by uh, the actual S&P. You should go by the actual Dow. Uh, you know what? I try to keep it simple. All right. I go by the uh, S&P 500 ETF. Um, I find it easier, simple to follow. And... The volatility is good, especially when it comes to options. But anyway, um, let's take a look at this. So this is this year. All right. So. Oh, and you're not actually seeing everything here. Let me uh, move this over. So that way you can see it. OK, so as as you know, uh, when we started off in January, it shot up really, really, really quickly. Uh, if we are to take a look at last year, it was a steady increase. And then at the beginning of this year, it just shot up like crazy. So when we get to this point, which was just before February, uh, it fell. Now this was a, this is what I consider a correction. This was a correction. And then it came back down and it retested that low. And actually retested it a third time. Uh, and then it started its way back up. It was rocky. <laughs> It was a rocky uh, going back up, but it did go back up. Now, look at this area right here. Okay. You can't tell me that this is a correction. This is a lot more than a correction. 
You can't tell me that we're still in a bull market. Sorry, I don't believe you. <laughs> I mean, look at this, all right? It fell. Okay, this was the result of them raising interest rates with the Fed int raising interest rate. Okay, it fell. Climbed back up, fell again, all right? Just, just like it did. Uh, whoops. Just like it did over here all right same thing came back up fell retested it now over here it fell went back up fell back down retested that low went back up fell back down retested the low again but look what happened it fell even lower that's not a good sign all right uh, this yellow line that I've got right here represents the 50-day uh, moving average. The, uh, the uh, what is that, turquoise, whatever it is, uh, represents the 100-day moving average. The red one represents the 200-day moving average. And you can see that the 50 has gone gone under the 200. Uh, they keep saying, oh, the uh, death cross is coming. The death cross is coming. It's already happened. <laughs> it's already happened. Uh, in my opinion, it's already happened. It's happened right here. All right. I mean, first, it happens here with the 100-day moving average. I think that's like a warning sign. Then you got this one here that crosses under the 200-day moving average. That's kind of like, you better have a game plan. If you're going to get stocks, you better have a game plan. Like, maybe only get a few. Maybe get a few more as it goes down further. But definitely don't put your whole, you know, cash into it. Because... Uh, that may not be a smart thing. The concern is when the 100 day crosses underneath the 200 day. That's going to be bad. If we were to zoom out here, so you can see the bull market pretty much started right around here. 2009 you had a correction here correction here a couple of corrections here and you know you could say well no no I mean yeah this dropped lower but look it came down went up retested the low went lower but it kept going up you have a W that formed All right Look at this. You got a W here, uh, but now it's kind of going. See, this is a lot different. Sorry, but um, as far as this crossing, crossing under. If we were to go back here to when we had a um, some serious corrections, there's this. Okay, they crossed under. Went back up. Crossed back under again. These are things to be aware of here. This is what I look at. Okay, this was 2011. You can see here when it crosses underneath. Um, this is something to be careful of. Maybe get some puts, help protect your investment. It's a form of insurance. But here's that uh, bear market that happened in 2008. You can see that it crossed under here, and so did the 100-day moving average. And it it tried. It tried to go back, back up over it. It didn't make it. And as we know, it fell. This was around the housing crisis. 
you know, but once it crossed back over, it was on its way back up. So you may want to consider, you know, getting some stocks down here. Cause see, let's say, let's say it dropped here. All right. And you bought, bought some stocks, maybe not a lot, just a few. Cause you're like, Oh, it's on sale. Great. Then it comes and falls down again. Might be a good idea to maybe buy a few more stocks while it came down here. Um, and then, you know, it goes back up and now you're making money off of these and you're making off money off of these. Um, and as far as maybe selling while it's high and buying when it's low, it's not a bad idea. I mean, heck, if you can, if you can sell and, you know, with the difference, make a hundred, two hundred dollars, why not? Because then you could use that money along, along with the money that you got back from your stocks to buy more, to buy more once it's lower. Why not? I don't see why, you, you know, when they say you shouldn't take your money out of the market. Well, my whole thing is, is that if it's going down, it's going down like what it is. It might be too late to sell now, but my whole thing is if it, if it's going down, why not sell it? Take some money off at the table and then use that extra money to put back and maybe get a few more shares. That's my whole thing. Um, I've found that, uh, the S and P and the Dow tend to mirror each other. Uh, let's see, can I pull that up here? Yeah, I did remember what the DIA is Dow Jones. Now take a look. Here's the Dow Jones. Looks pretty similar, don't it? <laughs> Looks pretty darn similar. It, it pretty much mirrors it. Uh, so I just go off of the S&P uh, rather than the Dow Jones. But, and yeah, you know, you can look at this and say, well, you know, the 50-day moving average hasn't gone underneath the, the 200 yet. We're okay. Well, maybe. I don't know. It's not a bad idea to look at both. After all, we know this this 50-day moving average may just bounce up, you know, right off of this 200. Because uh, you all know that most of this trading is being done by computers, right? And I don't mean people on computers. I mean computer algorith algorithms. How else is it that you can look at the FANG stocks, and they all do the same thing at the same time. You can't tell me that there's a lot of people that just happen to be buying these stocks all at the same time. How could they possibly know? They don't. This is all computer algorithms. These are all computers that are jumping in and buying the FANG stocks all at the same time because of whatever formula that, that's been tripped up. So, all right. Anyway, uh, I think we're done looking at this. All right. So anyway, I hope uh, what I've been showing you makes a little bit of sense. Um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a broker. I'm not some professional advisor. Um, I can't predict the stock market. No one really can. You can uh, try to, I try to find patterns and stuff in the market. And I'm still doing a lot of testing, uh, still revising some of my strategies. Uh, some work, some don't. Uh, but I continue to revise my strategies until I can find something that works. Um, I've traded mainly in options, um, rather than, uh, stocks because it's more easier to afford. Um, if I had more to work with, um, I certainly would, uh, buy some stocks for the long term. I do have some, not a lot. 
I have like five, <laughs> I have, okay, I have five shares in Pilgrim's Pride, um, which, uh, you know, they put out the turkeys and stuff like that. And I wish I had sold it last year because uh, I could have made about uh, $80, $90, and then it just fell after that. Um, but, uh, that's fine. Uh, it, I'm just going to hold on to it. Uh, that's the great thing about stock. You can just hold on to it. Uh, it doesn't expire. So that's what I'll do. And when it goes back up, um, I'll sell it. Um, I'll sell it and I'll look at uh, some other stock to get. My recommendation, if you're going to get stock, get stock that's going to give you dividends. Because at least with dividends, um, even if the market goes down, you'll still get your dividends. All right, You'll still make some money. So invest in stock that's got dividends, that pays dividends. Um, Apple does, Walmart does, um, and some of the other, other companies do that, you know, is not going to cost you an arm and a leg like uh, Google, uh, Alphabet, or uh, Amazon. That, that's, they're pretty expensive. So anyway, uh, that's my whole thing. Well, this is kind of sticking out here, but yeah, so, um, well, yeah, that's basically what I, all I got to say. I appreciate you watching this video. Um, let me know what you, what you think about what's going on. Um, I, my opinion is not, uh, you know, the main, uh, you know, opinion um, everyone's got opinion and everyone's got a point of view and I'm interested in your point of view. Uh, just, just be polite. That's all I ask, uh, in the, uh, comment section. Uh, I'd love to talk with you and, uh, just get your ideas. Uh, thanks. And I will see you on the next rambling video. Did you like this video? Well, you might like some of these others. I've got tons of them on a variety of different topics. They are just down-to-earth conversations of things that happen to be going on at the time of recording. Subscribing is an awesome thing, too, because it notifies you of any new video uploaded. Thanks for watching, and we'll ramble again soon.